In my hand here is an energy usage meter, and it's a popular one from P3 International, and it's known as a kilowatt. Now, maybe several people already know what this is, maybe others don't and are looking at energy usage meters. Anyway, people buy these to measure the wattage, amperage, and other factors of electrical loads that a person has in their household. Say, maybe people want to measure how much load their air conditioner uses or the load on a refrigerator or a toaster oven, whatever that you can plug into in an outlet, you can measure with this. And it's most commonly used to measure the kilowatt hours consumed by an electrical device. So say someone plugs one of these into the outlet with an air conditioner and they're running it, they can see the kilowatt hour measurement on the display of the kilowatt and then with some calculations with how much it costs per kilowatt hour, they can gauge how much it would cost them on their electric bill. So that's what they use these for. So this, of course, has several different functions, but the best way is to plug it in and show how it works. I'm going to bring up a power source. Now, I should mention, plugging this directly into an outlet can be a bit of an issue, especially if you've got several devices on it. Because you have to plug this pretty much into either the top or bottom outlet. But regardless which one you plug it into, if you plug it in the top outlet, this bottom part sticks down too far so you can't use the bottom plug. So this pretty much takes up an entire outlet by itself because of its size. Here we're going to plug it in. And it's starting up. In the very first display that comes up on the screen is the voltage. And according to this, it says there's 122.6 volts, which is about right, being that there's 120 volts here in the U.S. And then, with the other buttons, the volt button is right there, so if you want to look at your voltage, you hit that one. The next one over is your current, and that's measured in amps. I don't have a load on it right now, so it's not going to show anything. And next to that is your watts. Then is our volt amperage. Now, volt amperes, I'll get into these a little bit later when I put a load on there to show you how it works. But they're kind of a certain estimation on power usage. Now, this one here is our frequency measurement. And in the U.S., it's 60 hertz. So that's right. If this was used in the United Kingdom or Europe, it'd be 50 hertz. If I press it again, that's our power factor. Again, we'll talk about that a little later. I mean, the very last one is our kilowatt hours measurement. So the first option gives us our kilowatt hours consumed since the device is on there. And then we also have a clock, basically a timer telling us how long this has been plugged in for. So let's go all the way back to volts. Now I've got a small box fan that I'm going to plug in here and put a load on it. And the voltage drops down across the circuit a little bit. That's normal. So 122.4. But now I'm going to go over to the amp reading. And now it says I have 850 milliamps of current in the circuit there. That's right. I'm going to go over to watts. And it says I have 54.7 watts of power being consumed. So as most devices tell you what the wattage is, say, you know, your 60 watt light bulb, you would expect to consume 60 watts. Well, you can hook this up if you can find a, plug it into a lamp or something and find out if it really is 60 watts. Or if you don't know what it is, you can use this and that'd be helpful to figure it out. Now, again, I press that and I go to the volt amperes and it says 103 volt amperes. Now, for most people, they're going to be looking at the watts here. They're not really going to be looking at volt amperes. But volt amperes, it's a calculation of multiplying the volts and the current together. So again, it's multiplying that 122.4 times 0 0.83, and that gives that VA rating. Now, as I say, most people are not going to look at this, but if you're buying something like an uninterruptible power supply, a UPS for your computer, they're usually represented in volt amperes, usually like 700 volt amperes or something like that. It's what you mostly find them listed in. And by using this on your computer system, you can gauge what capacity size UPS you would need. 
to handle the load that you've got. So that's one way that you can use wall tampers. It's basically a theoretical maximum load that the item that I'm powering here could have if it didn't have things like reactants and impedance in an AC circuit, but that's not really what I want to talk about in this. This is just about the meter. That's a whole discussion of AC circuits when you get into that stuff. We're going to move over. Again, Hertz isn't going to change. Now we're in the power factor and it says 0 0.53. And power factor is another calculation. It's a ratio between the watts, 54 right here, and volt amperes of 100. And most of the time it hovers around 50% or, point, or 0 0.5. That's what you mostly see it around. And it's again, it's a ratio between the real power, which is the watts, and the apparent power, which is volt amperes. And the best way to look at this is look at it as efficiency. If this value is higher, it means whatever I'm powering is doing good. It's efficient. If it's lower, it's not doing so well. It's less efficient. It's drawing more power. And that's how you can kind of gauge what power factor is used for. It goes from 1 to negative 1, but you're never really going to see negative 1 unless you've got something that provides power backwards through the energy usage meter, so you're really not going to see that. But it's kind of a way to gauge uh, how well something's working, because if the v if your volt amperes and your watts have a much larger gap in it, like I say, you're going to see a, a lower number there. If it's smaller, you're going to see a higher number. So that gives you kind of an idea of the efficiency there. And then, of course, last we go into kilowatt hours. Because I've had it in here for five minutes now, which is about right based on the recording. But it's not drawing enough to really change our kilowatt hours measurement here. But, again, and you know, when you got to measure something in your household and you want to know how much it's drawing or how much it's going to cost you, you know, go pick up one of these. Again, it's, it's from P3 International and it's called a kilowatt, your energy usage meter.